Hey everybody. So in the last video I was going over a VR180 camera that I don't recommend and the question really is okay what's the point of showing a camera that you don't even recommend for anything? Well this is why it's worth looking at. So this is a comparison of <clears throat> the Zcam twin rig on the left to the Evo Insta360 on the right. So you can see that there's just a fundamental difference in the amount of pixels you really can do something with when you're willing to make a few compromises uh, to how you're really sh trying to shoot and present a VR180 image. So on the left, the nice thing about distant objects, if you have enough resolution, is that they get rendered clearly and you can you know, get more of a sense that you're in a space and more of what I'm shooting is environmental stuff. So uh, VR180 is great if your subject is six feet away and they're, you know, like cosplay or something where all the detail is very close and it's great. But I'm generally trying to feel like I'm in a different environment, like the beach or a mountain or something like that, or trail or whatever. So I need the distant objects to be rendered at a higher resolution. And you can definitely do this with cameras. It's just there's very few cameras that you can sync accurately in in 3D for video and still images, and this is one of the setups. Once you get past all, all the other obstacles of just getting it set up, it can do pretty good quality for relatively low money. So if you look on the left image, you can really see a lot of detail here, and like the chimney in the distance, you can barely make out the bricks in the Evo camera on the right, and of course the, the shingles on the roof there, on the on the top right part of the roof, it's just very different. There's a lot of clarity, a lot more resolution. Things are sharp. Things look kind of normal on the left. So on the right, it's the, the Insta360 Evo. And people might think, well, your Evo's broken. Are you doing something wrong? There's nothing wrong with it. This is just the camera. It doesn't have that many pixels. So it's got to stretch all the quality across a huge distance. And it's shooting a 2880 by 2880 image. And when you look at what I'm doing with the the Zcam twins, I can use the entire, practically the entire width of the sensor. Here's the Evo image, and it's a circular fisheye. So I think the Evo shoots a little bit wider than 180 degrees. Um, so you can see it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is capture everything in a full hemispherical, you know, capture. There's nothing wrong with it. It's sharp. It's clear. When you look at it, at, in, you know, in the scale of the whole entire photograph, it's a totally normal rendered photograph. It's just uh, there's not enough resolution for the distant objects. And the distant objects, if you look at it this way, they're way out there. This is the Mikey F2 6.5 millimeter lens. So it's a circular fisheye, which has a lot of distortion in it, but it captures 180 degree field of view in a circular image. So it's similar to the Evo circular fisheye that they use. Uh, when you're shooting the Insta360 Evo, if you want to see what the original image looks like, just change the file extension from INSP, which is photo, to, IN to just to JPEG. It's really just a JPEG image is all that thing really is, and you can see the native original image. But on this version of the image from the Mikey lens that I'm using, it's pretty much the same thing. You're getting an extremely wide field of view. It's 180 degrees in every, you know, every direction, basically. And you can, because we're, allow, we're allowing the thing to use almost the full width of a micro four thirds sensor, we're getting a lot more pixels across. So the, the height you can see though for the circle is cropped. So the height is, we're, we're compromising a little bit and this is the only area that we're really making a compromise from the VR180 format, which is the very top and the very bottom of the image are gonna be cropped a little bit. So to figure out how much cropping you're going to have to deal with to get this huge bump in, in resolution, it's literally where the tripod legs are. So if you look at this image and then compare it to the Evo image, the only real difference is at the very bottom with the Evo you can see the tripod legs. In this one you can't because that hole in the bottom of the image that you're missing, there's a hole in the bottom and one in the top, it's just a hole as big as the tripod leg. So that's very minimal amount of stuff that you're missing from the image. And if you're willing to deal with just that, you're able to fundamentally zoom in a circular 
image across a, a sensor that isn't a square sensor. So you can make use of the width of the sensor, keep the full width that you're getting 180 degrees wide, you're just going to have a little bit of cropping at the top and the bottom. So that's the compromise we're making here. But the you can see obviously that the resolution difference is huge and we're basically putting a micro four thirds sensor up against a tiny 1 over 2.3 or 1 over 2.5, whatever they used uh, sensor in that Insta1, Insta360 Evo. So the hope is that the industry gets to 8K, which will give us the resolution, and hopefully also they get to use one-inch sensors on these cameras. And uh, we can expect these simple, small, lightweight cameras to be great and do everything we want, but not have just such a big compromise for the distant objects that we can see in these images. When you want to shoot video, you get this crop out of this camera, the Zcam E1, which is it's going to crop in on the image when you shoot video, so not only now are we cropping the sky and the ground a little bit more, it's finally cropping the left and the right side as well. So you can see that uh, we're not going to get 180 degrees field of view out of this circular fisheye lens. It's going to be a little bit less than that, but you're using almost the entire sensor. So you can see the 4x3 sensor, and only in the very corners do you see the black edges where there's nothing there. So you're using, you're using all of those pixels that you've got to produce the image, where if you look at any native VR180 camera, even if it's a square sensor that's natively square, there's a large amount of pixels that aren't doing anything because the edges of the square are doing nothing. The circle doesn't fill the square. So the nice thing about you using the circular fisheye on this sensor is that you're cropping in, on it, cropping in on it so much that you're able to use almost all of the sensor and you get a far better image quality out of it. So this is with the circular fisheye lens. And finally, this is what the Rokinon 7.5mm f3.5 lens looks like when I'm shooting with this camera rig. So of course this lens covers the full image sensor and no matter if you're doing stills or video, it's going to cover the whole sensor either way. So, of course, when you zoom in, it's going to give you a cropped uh, field of view a little bit. And when you're shooting with this lens in video mode, you're getting a field of view that's about the same as a GoPro Hero camera. And this is really why I built the rig, is to this kind of format I like, which is 16 by 9 of course, format when you're shooting video on the Zcam E1. And the field of view is wide. It's not super wide, 180, VR 180 definitely at this point. And this is kind of the advantage of having the Zcam E1 twin rig is depending on the lenses you put on there and what you're shooting, you can get a pseudo VR 180. I mean, you can do straight VR 180 by just doing shooting a 220 degree field of view and it'll create a perfect little circle on your little micro four thirds sensor. And then you can get the same kind of VR180 that an Insta360 Evo has. Oddly, the quality won't be wildly better because the Evo is not that bad at doing what it does. It's just that the compromise really is getting that circle to fit in the image sensor and getting it to fit when you crop in on video. That's where you're losing everything. So I don't you know, normally need VR180. I really want super wide angle 3D video because that does give you the same immersive effect when you're wearing a head-mounted display, you still see an image that covers your entire field of view if you're looking straight ahead with these head-mounted displays. And if you do look left and the right, you still have a fairly good bit of distance before you run out of, you know, image when you're looking left and right and up and down. So this is definitely what I wanted to get to. It works. There's a lot of pain in getting the Zcam E1 twin rig to work. But if you can get it to work, uh, the synchronization actually is pretty good with the iZugar dongles that you use to synchronize these cameras together. So, you know, I can't recommend this rig to everybody because the rig is very problematic, unreliable, difficult to set up, bulky, you know, it's got a bunch of bunch of bad issues. But if you're the kind of person that's been struggling to build your own 3D cameras already, then this is a kind of an example of what you can get out of this. And it is the best thing going right now that's re realistically affordable.